It's Australia's busiest waterway. Sydney Harbour hosts thousands of commuter ferries, recreational yachts and around 1,200 commercial vessels each year. But boats burn fuel. And globally, shipping accounts for 3% of carbon emissions. And whilst the commuter ferries here are to be replaced with electric ones in the next decade, one local startup is already working to clean up our waters. Hello. Hi, how are you? It's cleans away sludge that slows boats down. The slime which can develop can increase the drag of the ship such that you have a 25% or higher increase in fuel consumption. And it also leads to a massive increase in emissions. Biofouling on hulls causes at least 1% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. You can see the water rippling. Can we see process. some brushing? Yeah, you can see some brushing. If you're brave enough, you can put your hand on there and <laughs> feel how powerful it is. Go on then. Whoa! Get in there. <laughs> The company hopes to reduce the need for conventional protective anti-fouling paint, which is toxic for marine life. It's actually one of the largest direct sources of ocean microplastics is this paint. It's not a byproduct of something else like, you know, uh, dust from car tires or um, microfibers from textiles. We're deliberately pouring plastic and poison into the sea. Underwater, things that usually help autonomous vehicles move around, like GPS and LiDAR scanners, just don't work, so they've designed their own complex navigation and perception system. Look at it go! Once you're actually in contact with a boat and the robot is in this highly disturbed environment and it's pushing against the boat and the boat's pushing back and it's being pushed in waves and so on, then you need a very sophisticated way to see through this kind of cloud of bubbles and particles and so on. And that's what we've developed. We have lots of boats that have 20, 30, 40 years worth of lifespan left. Lots of those boats are not gonna be able to be retrofitted to become electric or something else. The best way of saving emissions from those boats, of saving the waterways that they're in, is to make them more efficient, to keep them clean, to make sure that we have slippery holes going through the water as easily as possible. That exists as a problem across the world. As well as scrubbing, the bot is being modified to tackle another threat to underwater wildlife. We've adapted Hullbot into a tool for managing sea urchins, which are in overabundance and threatening kelp on lots of coastlines around the world. They've called it Culbot, and it can detect and control the pests with a drill attachment. In a special mode we call Urchin Destroy Mode. Um. It's been trialled by researchers from the University of New South Wales and the Sydney Institute of Marine Science as part of their restoration efforts. So seagrass meadows and kelp forests are super important uh, habitats that they provide food and home and shelter for hundreds of other species. It's what we call foundation species. Globally, we've lost about a third of the world's seagrasses and about 50% of the world's kelp forests are degraded or declining. Up until now, they've used some very manual tools. We're about to count. The urchins that we see in 10 metre bands, uh, and then we go back along the line again and we use this quadrat. Uh, we place it down and we take photos uh, along the transit line as well. And then we can take that data and go back and uh, review it all back in the office. When we go with divers, we're only able to sample a small section of our study habitat. The beauty about a, a robot is that it can go very deep, it can stay down for as long as we want it. It scans the ocean floor, taking photos of the habitat as it goes, automatically piecing them together to build a precise digital record in the form of 3D models. It's a great science communication tool because we can show the funding bodies, for example, or just the general public, what things look like, look like before and after we intervene. Yeah, if we came back at night, they would be all out. So what do you think, Adriana? This is um, excellent. You can see the barren area really well. You can see the sea urchins. And you can see how, with the robot, you can just capture a much, much larger area of the seafloor. 
Yes, than we can with others. Surprisingly clear an image, isn't it? It is actually, and it's it's not a particularly good day either. So. Instead of sending divers down for days at a time in shark-infested waters, Adriana thinks the same job could be done with the bot in only a couple of hours. It's not only about not damaging marine habitats anymore, it's about recovering what we have lost. Because there have been you know, hundreds of years of destruction, of taking nature for granted. So it is an exciting time because we're trying to turn from a decline to a recovery, and it is happening. You know, we'd love to solve climate change, we'd love to clean up the ocean, but it's a time-consuming activity to get in there and pick up plastic or get rid of pest species or clean hulls by hand. Robots let us automate that, but they also let us do it much more frequently and on a much bigger scale, the kind of scale we need to solve the immensity of these challenges. Of course, this is just one tool in the giant jigsaw of cleaning up our mess. Like many others, it's for us, industry and governments, to determine whether or not to do something with them. <laughs>